We all know we went to, uh, we had a, a mission trip to uh, Grenada. طبعا everyone who sees Grenada, oh yeah, I'm Rakhine Grenada. طبعا كل whenever someone hears Grenada, they think of the Caribbean, they think of the beach, which is George. And all the nice and wonderful things. Uh, we had a little, just a little bit taste of this, but uh, the majority was was uh, really the uh, uh, doing the mission. So we're waiting. We have uh, some of the members here: Bishoy, uh, Karen. Uh, they were in this uh, trip, and we're waiting for Andrew. He prepared a presentation to uh, to really go through what we did in uh, in in Grenada. And most importantly, like the highlight is really how to see the hand of God. And, and, and trust me, believe me, th this was, by the way, my first mission trip ever in my life as a priest, as a person. This was my first mission trip, the first time to do mission. Uh, so, so it was really amazing. It was really phenomenal. And nothing really could describe it other than you have to experience it for yourself. So we're just gonna the the the, the objection the objective is to uh, let you have a little bit of a taste uh, of what happened of what happened there, the things that took place, and how we saw the hand of God. I think this is the amazing thing is is how how we see the hand of God in everything, how God uses the little that we have prepared and. A phenomenal response from from the people. There are also there, there are also those who are dating, like George, who has been two times to this trip, one to explore and and, and the first mission trip. This was the second, but unfortunately he was not with us. And everyone, what is George? What is George? What is George? <laughs> and because he's George, and the island, there is one of the area is named after Saint George. So every time he goes, he says, do you know the story of St. George? And he tells them the story of St. George. He gives them a picture of St. George. So he was on her own. Yeah, I mean, I've seen him in action the first time like uh, we, we, we met. The service is St. George. And the reason is when we took the event, there's, in the diocese, there's a course, part of the evangelism course. And I took the course. It was during COVID. I told him I was bored, so I just took the course. <laughs> and uh, we, part of the course, I thought it was we get the chance to go to Africa. Okay. And so I wanted to go to Africa. And I'm like, it's COVID, we'll go to Africa, just get out of this nonsense that we're in. And so that was what I thought the course was about. Little did I know that's not what the course was about. The course was about researching a place anywhere in the world that doesn't have any service, like, like a church or anything like that, and to, to figure out the needs that's there and to go uh, into like this evangel evangelize to these people. And so there were four Georges in that course, okay? <laughs> and so we, everybody researched as a group, and we researched different areas. And so some people chose India, some people chose Sweden, and we chose Grenada because there's already a cop. There's a bunch of people that go there to the university for medical school there. And so we, part of our argument for this sort of choosing it is we were like, okay, look, there's cops there, we can serve them. We can also use them, whoever's going to like send stuff to Grenada. The language is English, we don't have to speak Spanish or some other African language, so there's a lot of benefits. Anyways, we felt, as Luna was saying, God's work in directing that. And so we presented it, and the Agunas that were part of the service, and the Mina, everybody blessed the service, said, okay, let's give this a shot. And I think the biggest thing I would say with Abuna is, again, seeing God's hand in directing uh, that. And there's, there's so, and I want to hear your stories, but there's so many stories that happen where we knew that God is saying, okay, you guys go, don't worry, I'm with you, there's a need, go ahead. And so it was more that we were scared more than anything, to be honest with you. So, yeah. Yes, uh, 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 and, and especially whenever there is a new door that is being opened, and how to tap into this door. So George was there in the first uh, 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 trip to, to, to explore. Uh, I usually go there every November. Uh, and this is basically, as, as mentioned, is to visit the students uh, studying medicine on the island. So I, I, I usually do island, uh, island hopping. <laughs> I become island hopper. So I visit at least two islands. So another island, uh, Antigua and uh, Grenada. So uh, they said we're gonna we're gonna join you, and we're gonna see what we what we can do. And they connected somehow with few organizations uh, over there. 
And this is when the first trip went and visited that organization. Uh, for some reason in our, in our trip, two new opportunities came, came about and we were, I was so anxious <laughs> about them, uh, but they turned out to be the most amazing experience. I don't wanna really uh, reveal everything until Andrew comes and after he shares, maybe I would say, but just to give you titles, uh, hospital and prison. We've been, we've, uh, like the good thing is the previous group connected with three orphanages or, and, and Mother Teresa, uh, 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 three orphanages meaning different age, different age group. And one of the options that were suggested for us to try and, uh, and, and visit is the hospital and the prison. The one that I was scared of, uh, from the most was the prison. prison. <laughs> And I t I'm telling everyone, I'm taking you to the prison today. <laughs> Tell your families, we're going to prison. <laughs> and this turns out to be the most amazing service opportunity. The most amazing uh, service opportunity, starting from the connection until the completion of the service. And the connection started here from Canada, Sarah, Sarah, Sarah Awad, one of the one of the leaders as well, who did the connection. She she gave us a connection to the the, the, the prison, uh, one of the people responsible for uh, uh, the prison. So connecting with someone from a different culture, we're coming to the prison to <coughs> visit. So it wasn't it wasn't that uh, easy, but we said so. Uh, basically, I called him. I say, Sergeant. Uh, I forgot his name, Willard. Williams. I, uh, hmm? Williams. Williams, Sergeant Williams. I would like to. Uh, we we have a group, and would like to. I uh, would like to 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 come and visit. And says, okay, who are you? Send me a text message describing to me the group, the purpose, everything, and I will check and get back to you. So we we had a local one of the local Grenadian person. Her name is Mirati. So imagine, I call my wife and I tell her I'm with Marathi. <laughs> but actually we discovered that her name is Marathi Christos, which means the bride of Christ. So this is her new baptismal name, the bride of Christ. So she said, you know what, this seemed like a lot of hassle and bureaucracy. I have another, another connection. So, okay, so I kind of, I kind of gave, gave up on this, on this connection. The following day, he told me to call him 9 o'clock. 9 o'clock, I was praying a liturgy, so I did not connect with him. And okay, I found that he gave me a missed call and he sent me a text message to confirm that he needs me to connect with him. So I call him, apologizing, I'm sorry, I had a service, this is our group, this is the mission. says, I'm going to give you to talk, to talk with the commissioner. So the commissioner is the highest person in the, in the, so I don't, I don't know how to address this guy. Like I've never, I says, hi, Mr. Commissioner, how are you? <laughs> he asked what, he, he was very decent. He asked about the information. I shared the information, said, okay, we're going to get back to you with the time, if, if it's possible or not. Same day, he calls back and he says, come and visit uh, to next day, so this was Wednesday, come and visit Thursday, 2 o'clock. Actually, we had a totally different program that we wanted to do, but he said, you know what, he came back with this, with this time, we're definitely going to, going to take it. So we took the opportunity and we went there. Uh, 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 do, do you have any, any feedback, Bishoy and Karen, for your experience going inside the prison? <laughs> I don't want to be the one talking. You help me out. <laughs> it was so. It was so. It was kind of. It was kind of weird. Like when we had to place our phones in the car, uh, I immediately knew. Okay, uh, 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 okay. <laughs> so we have to leave, of course, our phones, our uh, any electronics. We have to leave it. Uh, behind, so uh, this and upset then, Bishoy. <laughs> oh, they were more than more than more than just that. But I got the feeling that they're very like relaxed over there in terms of like their justice system. Like, like they treat the prisoners. I think it what confirmed it was when we went to go meet the commissioner of the prison first, mm -hmm. and he was like, uh, like we're here to serve them in a sense, mm -hmm. um, and bring them back and rehabilitate them. And I was like, wow, that's a that's that's a really like. That's a diff that's a totally different out 
book than than what we expected. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And, and they asked us. He asked us to pray for them and to pray for the guards and to pray for uh, the prisoners. Um, so it was like it was already different right at the start, right at the oh, outset. Sure. <laughs> two new members, two more members, yes. <laughs> no, 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 it's okay, Habib, it's okay. I'm, I'm, I'm keeping them entertained, I'm describing the prison. <laughs> but I mean, it was scary. Like, at one point, like, when we were walking in, once we got past the gate and we started walking into the men's quarter, like, it was just comments left, right, and center, and then like you could see their, the looks on their faces. Fantayani, you're going in and you're absolutely but terrified. Are they, are they behind bars or are they in like? No, nope, they're like they're out in the courtyard. They're out in the courtyard. And you guys are just walking. But then the we walk by the maximum security too, and I was like, why are we walking by the? Why is the maximum? The maximum security looks like a hut. Oh and then like, suddenly the I door of I the maximum it. security yeah. opened. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, I am. <laughs> Is this guys and girls going in? So uh, yes, yes. <laughs> like, the, girl, the girls were in the middle of the procession oh and we were we flanked them on both sides. <laughs> so <laughs> there would be at least a barrier. Um, wow. And walking in. And, and this was one of the other miracles. Like we were not sure how are we going to go. And so we were six guys, four <laughs> girls. And I was kind of telling the girls, you know what, they might not let you in, so let's just be ready for whatever happens. We, we don't know. To our surprise, the, 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 when he was walking, he says, they have 362 prisoners in the main, main prison. And guess how many in the girls? <laughs> so you, you, you know what? I'm going to let Andrew present, and then towards the end, Oh, yeah, I'm gonna keep you suspense and maybe we'll continue. So, come. come. Alright, with your permission, Abuna. Um, so, the hand of God in the mission. Um, this was a picture taken on, on site in one of the home visits. We really liked his hat. Men of God make a difference. And it was really just a special, special moment. Uh, just a little background information. And George Kaltis, correct me if I do say anything wrong. I'm your person, man. So a little background information. Uh, the exploration trip was done by four members of St. Mary's Church. Uh, one of them was being George Faustus. This was November 2022. Uh, four or five members? Four members, right? Uh, four. Sarah, George. George, and I'm good, right? So yeah, they were the blessed servants that kind of went on the exploration trip. Uh, Sarah told me much stories and how everything came to be, and definitely God worked through these four amazing servants to set things up. The pilot mission trip took place on April 30th of this previous year, like this year, until May 8th. Uh, the theme verse was Philippians 4.13, and it was, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me, and the whole model was Jesus is my superhero. So it was the same shirt that you see right here, um, but instead of Jesus loves you, it was Jesus is my superhero. And it was 23 servants, including Father McCary. The follow-up mission was this month, from November 6th to the 12th. And it was John 3.16 was a theme. And it was Jesus Loves You with this logo that we had. This logo was actually designed by one of the youth university students back in April. And now this is the logo that people in Grenada identify as. Like, as soon as they see these people with the logo, that's them. They don't really know us people. They know the logo, which is really amazing. It's by, it was made by Aaron, who took the pre-servants course with us, what? but couldn't make it because she's still studying. Oh, man. Yeah, so it's and Erin, yeah, she's the one. She's the one that does, did the logo. Beautiful logo. Now it's um, Dorothy Hopkins, one of the sites that we visited. Uh, back in April, we actually painted that logo on the wall, and it's still there. It just needs some touch-ups, but another time. <laughs> uh, before I, I go into this, this was the uh, first thing I want to talk about in the hand of God in the mission. Um, when we started the meetings, and there was a lot of people attending the meetings, but you take that first meeting up until the actual trip, we shuffled a lot. And there was a lot of people, you know, what we started with was not what we ended up with. And it was just amazing. And then just, I'll tell you the breakdown of the 10 people that ended up going. We had three people from Mississauga, two people from Milton, one from Oakville, one from Kitchener, two from Toronto, and lo and behold, one from Saskatchewan and the Bonobotros. So you see 10 different people coming from different areas, and yet all 10 of them 
I feel like presented a specific skill to the trip. And it was really just amazing to witness that 10 people from different areas and we were all put together. Like I only knew two people on the trip. I only knew Alfred and Ahmed. Bishoy, who always talks everywhere I go. I love you, bro. <laughs> uh, Bishoy, is, I, well, first time I met Bishoy, it's okay. First time I met Bishoy was in the Ogilvy, it was in the meetings. None of us really actually got to know each other. And the girl from Saskatchewan, I met her in the airport. Hi, I'm Andrew. I have no Andrew idea who you are. So that's that. That was the kind of first thing I want to mention of the hand of God in the mission, that he even cares about who goes. And it's not about what we, if we deserve it or not. It's about God's will being performed in the mission. That's very, very important that Abuna didn't have a say. Nobody had a say. It was just a matter of 10 people. We didn't know anything about them. And we ended up going together. So locations visited. This was the first time we do the hospital. Um, last time we wanted to kind of visit, I believe Sarah was in connections, so we had the <coughs> chance of going to the hospital. Um, again, we couldn't really take pictures inside. Um, ten of us went in with Abuna. There was the men's area, the women's area, so two by two would go. Simple things. We'd have to pray, to the, pray with them, uh, offer bracelets, offer the cards, which I have in my bag. That's another thing. Uh, just like very simple and the Grenadians were very very welcoming. Uh, they're very welcoming We pray for, with them and they were really just blessed to have us They were blessed to have anyone visit really and they were just very simple people if anything They touched us more than we touched them. So it was a blessed uh, trip and this was I think on the Wednesday or the Tuesday I can't remember uh, But it was just it kind of started the trip off on a very just uh, nice note Queen Elizabeth uh, this is really um, very touching, because Queen Elizabeth really was the, um, this is a home who are orphaned. This home kind of takes care of these orphans, everything but school time. I'm saying this is special, why? Because initially when we went in April, we were prohibited from taking any kind of pictures. So the very fact that we were able to take a picture, it was an advancement. And at the end, the supervisor, I think her name was Debbie, she came up to us and told us, you guys are like family now, and you are welcome anytime. This is a huge step up from last April, last May. Again, the hand of God in the mission. I just want everyone to know from the exploration trip and back in November until now, this wasn't all progress overnight. You know, these homes or these sites, they see this group of people coming from a different country. They're not going to be so accepting. So the fact that we were able to do this and you see this, these are the green shirts that we gave them in May. So when we saw them, they still had these shirts. And the next time we provided the blue shirts and those other pictures, they were wearing the blue shirts. And they were very, very touching. They were very just um, full of energy, full of love and full of excitement. And we would love, we would just play with them. We had crafts ready. Uh, so anytime we visit a place, we either had crafts. Um, this is Mark and Maria. They're from Toronto. They couldn't make it today. Uh, they really led the way with the crafts. They did an exceptional job. Um, but yeah, so that's, uh, that's Queen Elizabeth. Usually it's around, I think, 19 or 20 20 youngsters. <laughs> Grand Aunt Social Development Center. So it's run by a lady named Sister Allison. She is a nun. Um, she actually kind of gathered girls that were falling behind academically or just falling behind in schools, with homes, whether kicked out or dropped out. She kind of gathered them all and she just starts to give them a, a safe environment. They're teaching them skills and just kind of bring them up in, a, in the right place. Dorothy Hopkins, Home for Dis Disabled. I wasn't, I didn't go this time. We just had to go back to the house to get stuff. But um, the ones that did go, um, it's a very, very, um, just a touching place. Um, these are very disabled. Uh, just it's tough to see sometimes and it's tough to um, communicate with them. But they were full of joy. They were full of joy. And I know... I know for sure, like I, the, you know, so you'll see. They were like the best drummers we've ever had. Absolutely. Like, better that's than some of the people here, man. Yeah, yeah. And okay. that's, uh, we'll see that in the video. They were full of energy and they were just, um, it's hard, but at the same time, you see God's grace in them. You see God's grace in them. And again, they identified the logo with the logo on that wall. So it was really special. Now we have follow ups so we have progress. So it's really the hand of God in the mission. And they remember George as well from the George, yeah. They remember George and Sarah, like they're, they have incredible memories, incredible memories. They, those, those kids, you just, you know, so a lot of times the parent, parents there, or if they're even having parents, but like, they, they just, they know their kid has a disability, they drop them off the day that they're born. Oh so my. some of them actually have not, don't know anything else besides that home. 
They haven't lived anywhere else besides that home. Mm. So there's people there that literally they were dropped off as babies, and they just kind of lived there. And so oh my. it very I didn't know that. It, the first time I went to that home, oh, I was scared because yeah. the types of disabilities yeah. that you see, hard. they're like they're like there's malformed like it, it just I was scared. I yeah. honestly like, yeah. at all the places that scared it was, me. It really I, was. It's not things that you typically that see. you typically see here or anywhere. it was it was tough. It yeah, was yeah. tough. So you walk in, you feel like. I felt scared to be yeah. honest with you, but then, as you said, yeah. their energy and their it's love, phenomenal. Like you're kind of like, wow, they're like <laughs> they're human beings. Yeah. Like they're, yeah. and that to me is part of like when mm. it's, it was a changing moment from my perspective because yeah. like okay, no, there's nothing wrong with them. They're actually they're fully there. They're fully yeah. there. They're they're aware. They they're just they have a disability. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so that that's my it was, yeah. it's not a right way of looking at it but that's but how no, it felt. and that's how a lot of us felt it was just yeah. they're fully there they're fully in tune they're yeah. you know and Bishoy got them all riled up and we'll see that in the video in a bit but me and KP were literally talking about how the the at, in there there was a guy there was a boy named Michael a blue shirt uh, he was He's the guy that came to meet us like right when we showed up there and this guy this boy when we when we were on our way out he was standing in the run playing game with us, He's stealing adorable. my water bottle yes. and all things, <laughs> yes. like running off with it. He oh, was just a really playful kid. It was like, awesome, man. He's so, awesome. It was so awesome. It was incredible, yeah. man. Uh, next one was the Richmond Hill Prison. 363 males, <laughs> 7 females. <laughs> Ask Sergeant Sergeant Williams, and I quote, and I quote, Women are just better behaved. <laughs> that was his word for word. And we all just died of laughter. But. And just FYI, Sergeant Williams, he welcomed us so nicely, so guy. well. He took us in. He, we met the commissioner inside. We all came in the room and we were just, uh, the commissioner talked to us for a brief second or, or a minute. And again, I just wanted to note that Sergeant Williams welcomed us with open arms. Like he was such a well spoken gentleman. Uh, just just a very, very respectful human being. Like he loved us completely and he toured us inside. And um, the prison, we're going to get to it in the next slide. I'm just going to leave that right now for now because the prison was something else. Father Maligan's home for the boys. This is also progress because <coughs> number one, we couldn't really take pictures last time. Uh, so for us to even get a picture with her um, was a step up. Uh, the kids, when they, they knew that we were coming, they loved it. They were all in the courtyard, in that same courtyard. Um, playing basketball, soccer, man, they're amazing soccer players. I'm not playing because I was just exhausted. And just FYI, throughout the whole six days, I was sweating buckets. Oh, like, yeah. I was sweating buckets. <laughs> the whole trip would confess to that. Especially in the prison. Especially? <laughs> <laughs> man, we'll get to that after. Like yeah, I was... Experiencing his own... I was like, I was dying, right? <laughs> I must have dropped five pounds in that. Anyway, that's part of a very great place. And any of these homes we visit, we have like items um, from Canada that we bring with us. And another hand of God in the mission that I forgot to mention. Back in April, we had 23 servants, which means two bags per person. We had 46 luggages plus carry-ons. Air Canada completely waived any kind of charges and allowed us to take 46 bags. To the point that this time it was almost in our minds that, oh, this is going to be automatic. And yet, yes, Air Canada waived all the charges. 20 bags. We ended up miscounting, it was my fault, 21 bags, we just paid for one bag. But at the same time, they made 20 bags free of charge. The hand of God in the mission. These little things that we have no control over, God sends specific servants wherever you go. Like in the airport, we knew someone that ended up waving these charges. So again, the hand of God in the mission. I'm going to keep repeating that because, go ahead. Uh, sorry. Oh, no, no, go ahead. Um, do you, in any of these locations, do you know how often they get groups that, I'm going to say volunteer mm -hmm. and or outreach spiritually? So I'm going to answer you indirectly. The prison, we asked that, he's like, we got a lot of groups, but from different denominations. He's like, Christians, Muslims, Hindus, whatever. I'm not sure if these other homes, maybe George knows better, but maybe other homes get from others. But we, got, we just got a letter from uh, the previous one, uh, Dor um, Queen Elizabeth. A huge thank you letter saying that we live on these donations and that not we don't get a lot of donations and that your donations kind of keep us going from time to time. So from the sound of that letter, they don't get much visitors. Uh, maybe the prison is something else, but uh, to your point, good point. I mean, I think certain homes, they really just live off local donations if it's little, but our groups like that, when we come down with 20 luggages, they really, really actually benefit from it. And we really, beforehand, we ask them what they want and packing day, the day before the trip, we pack everything up, all the homes, 
but maybe I would have to ask Sarah if she knows more of that, but to my best of my knowledge, that would be the, my answer. I wouldn't have expected the prison had, had other yeah. visitors. So no, no, yeah. It's, uh, we were surprised to know that it's the most frequently visited, visited. location wow. by, by, by lots of groups. By lots of groups. Yeah, yeah. 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 So, wow. yeah. I think the other, the other, the other places as well. They receive some visits. Mm. Like I know Father Madigan. Like when I was signing in, because every time we go, we have to sign in, and they told us that there are some students from SGU, which is the medical university mm. there. They come uh, once a week or every other week to do tutoring. Mm. So, so some people come to do tutoring, and this is something that the boys, they are teenage boys, that they need. Uh, some help in, in, in this aspect. So they do have some groups visiting, but what's the frequency? What's the connection? We don't know the full picture about what they receive. But they are always in constant. They always yeah. are, are in constant are need. So that's Father Maligan. Uh, just hold on. Home visits. Never mind the picture for now. Home visits. Um, I don't know if you see it, but this lady in the back. Um, she's the mother of a lady named Marathi, which is really, really a God sent angel to this mission. She has been incredible. She has been incredible. Um, the way she does things, and she was only baptized last year, and she's just no time wasted. So she does home visits, her and her mom. So we kind of, like, we did, we did that with her last time. We did that this time as well. So we just made packages for them. We, I think we do seven or six or seven home visits on a nightly basis, give or take. Um, just miscellaneous items, so food, hygiene, specific home needs. So some of them have newborn babies, so they need diapers. Some people need adult diapers or bed sheets. Whatever it is, miscellaneous items, we try to get it for them. We would package it for them, and we just when we do the actual home visits, we rotate. So two by two, go to the home. It's literally a one to two minute thing. We just either pray with them, say hi, give them a bracelet. Um, we have this uh, John three sixteen cards. Um, so it was just, it was very nice and touching, like that, the first uh, first one that we saw, Men of God Make a Difference on that homepage, that was one of the home visits that we that we did. Um, so that, so the Marathi's mom, which she's in the back, after we finished the home visits, and when, we, when I say home visits, we're not talking about Eglinton, Credit View, and side roads. No, no, we're talking in the middle of complete forest, complete unpaved roads. We saw a cow or a goat, I'm not sure which one. <laughs> <laughs> and, 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 and a go, you know. So we just that, this, is, this is the environment that we're looking at, and we're just in the middle of. And honestly, at that point, the sunset was beautiful, and really was just uh, we just had like I think half an hour to kind of spare. So she, t um, there was an ice cream shop in the middle of the forest. So she brought us ice cream, and we just we mingled. The, this guy's name is Waldy. Um, or Wally, I have no idea his actual, <laughs> his actual full name. I'm not sure. Either Wally or Waldy or Wally, I have no idea, but an amazing gentleman. And by the way, him and Marathi would have dinner with us in our home, I think four or four or five or six nights. Uh, incredible, incredible personality. Um, this man over here, um, behind Wally is Emery. Emery's our driver. So he was our driver back in May. He's our driver now. And now he's our, I think he's our full-time Coptic church driver, so he's, <laughs> and he loves us. Like whatever we need, he, whatever we need, he's there. Whatever we need. <laughs> and, and this is one of one, one of the God sent angels Absolutely. for us. Absolutely. Is, is to drive us very quiet, yeah. very kind, very sincere, and yeah. very serious. Yeah. Whatever we ask of him, yeah, he man. just go. He does it. Like we went to to, to a place, we got something, we need yeah. to go back. And it's a 30 hour, 30 minutes yeah. drive back yeah, got to get stuff and come. He would just he would do, just it do it and in all, in all joy in, in, in and, all joy and yeah. service. And he, 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 he never complained. Never. Whatsoever. He was very so genuine. An angel sent to us from I truly feel those are the three Emery, yes. Emery, yes. Murati, yes. and Wally. Mm -hmm. Those are three truly, truly, without a doubt in my mind. Without a doubt in my mind. Murati, Emery, and Wally. These were God sent angels. You guys are speaking about how you guys were going to evangelize. So you guys are the face of Christ to these people. Mm -hmm. It's so unique to see how you guys have, are the ones who have encountered Christ through all oh, these people. Yeah, so yeah. It's like a very cool exchange. Oh, definitely. Yes. Yes. Definitely. Yes. definitely. Yes. yes. They were evangelizing to us. To all, us, absolutely. Everywhere we went. Everywhere. Absolutely. Like so, Williams was literally so like... We'll actually go back places. to that one right over... Uh, did I miss out on the photo? Hold on, here's the next one. Right here, the next one. 
this, this man, do you remember him? Is this uh, the one that uh, always holds the note? Yes, yeah. and he just, I feel like there's something in his mind, like he just, he's on a, I'm not going to say that. Like he's just, he's stuck on something that he keeps saying. Um, but he was just, he's fully genuine, he's fully human. And then last time, I don't think this time he did, but last time he sang for us, and his voice is incredible. Like what he sings, he was incredible. He sang, he sang this time, right? Yeah. And he was just, he's, he, was, he was a loving character. He was truly, truly a yeah. loving <laughs> character. <laughs> So the Friends of Richmond Home, this is just a geriatric facility. Um, there's about, I think, 40 of them. Um, again, either disabled or either can't move or can't walk or can't talk. And they just, they love their presence. We did songs for them. We did a play for them the next time. I don't know if they actually got it, but the fact that they just had people visiting them and it was that logo that they recognized, they were all sitting up front in their balconies and they were just, they loved it. To your point, so we witnessed a guy, what was his name, the Matthew 28? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I guess they yeah. but he was there yeah. in, the, in the initial trip. He was there in May, and he was there this time. And you he asked the story. You gotta tell him the story. He asked about all four of you guys, by the way. Yeah. So yeah, if you want to tell the story, go ahead. You know yeah, better than is, me. This is one of the many ways we knew that God was telling us, mm. "I want you to go." And so again, remember the course that we took, right? And the the, the Peter. Yeah, so what happened, I, yeah. I, I, I want to tell the story, like, I, I'm going to look bad, okay, and I don't want to look bad, so I'm just going to tell you, just, just know that I was done with the course, when I finished the course, I, I was like, I don't want to see anybody in my class anymore, that, that was a hard project, yeah. we're not going to actually implement this, yeah. this is just crazy talk, <laughs> that was what my thinking is, okay, and so I, I went home, and I was finally thank God, I graduated, and I'm done, I, the next morning, I get mm. a package in the mail, it was a religious, a Christian booklet yeah. that had all the colors of the people of the world, mm. black, white, yeah. Indian, Chinese, and on the back of the book, I still have the picture which I shared uh. with the group, it said, Matthew 28, 14 or 19, something yeah, like that, yeah. it said, go into all the world and baptize, uh, and I will be with you to the end, I'm and paraphrasing, yeah. you, know, yeah. you guys know that phrase, yeah. it's Matthew 28, it's last verse of Matthew 28, yeah. it's Matthew 28 19. Yeah. so I'm like, I was on, literally at work on my laptop, like on my laptop, and like at home working from home, and I'm checking my mail, and I'm like, <laughs> I was done. I, I'm done. I don't want to take this course. Like I'm done. So I sent the picture to the to our class group. I said, I think God has a sense of humor because like, I, like we're, I'm done. Like, yeah. I, like, so I'm like, okay, you know what? So I messaged the the the, the, the mm -hmm. people in the group and said, okay, look, why don't we just give it a shot? and see how far this is actually going to go. Because in my head, yes. we're not doing this. <laughs> my graduation conversation talk that yeah. I gave, it was like, we're not, like, we're not doing we're not, this. So anyways, but God had a different plan. So I said, okay, let's try it. And so at that moment, I was energized, okay? Mm. But I got distracted with work, and I kind of ignored it a little bit. Yeah. And mm. I, by the way, part of the research, I had reached out to Marathi, okay? Mm. So I had spoken to her. I randomly told her, I know this is random. I'm a guy in Canada. You don't know me. Yeah. And blah, blah, blah. We want to come and visit, right? And so she's like, okay, okay, okay. Anyways, uh. long story short, so I got this thing, projects done, yep. and I got this thing the next day in the mail, and I, I ignored it. Oh, well, I kind of was motivated for a second, and I was like, like okay, and then I kind of like, whatever, okay? Two weeks, three weeks, four weeks, and I'm up. now in the office at work, okay? I'm downtown. And I see a call coming from Grenada. I'm like, I don't know anybody in mm -hmm. Grenada. It's a random call. Like, you know, you get those random calls from yeah. like Boston, USA. Yeah, yeah. And like, yeah. There's a call from St. George, Grenada. And I'm like, no, no, no. I'm like, hello? <laughs> hello? <laughs> Nobody answers. And I'm like, come on. Seriously? I'm like, okay. So I message back to the group, guys, we gotta do this. <laughs> we really gotta do this, okay? And so, uh, I called back the number, by the way, because I was really, and the guy's like, I, I, I'm sorry, I don't know, we didn't call, I have no idea, right? So, anyway, so I'm like, in my head, this cannot be coincidence. So I, I, I called, I messaged the group and said, guys, let's meet. So, and I said, let's just set a date. Don't worry about what we're going to do yet, let's just set a date, yeah. just set a date. And so, at least I know then I'll have to do something, because like, we know that the date's coming, we're going to do something. So we set it to November, and we were in October or something like that. I'm like, guys, we're like five weeks or six weeks, we need to do something. And so God started working, and we started messaging people, and God sent people, like very talented people who do like the uh, Children for Christ, or what is it called, Kids for Christ? Here, they call it KFC or something like that. And so we had all these people about talents, and they helped us 
And so the first thing we do is, well, what do we do? And so we start saying, okay, we need a schedule. Like, you know, yeah. we need to call people, we need to call these organizations and tell them, will they accept us? And we were scared because we were gonna be rejected, right? And they're gonna be like, you guys are crazy. And we don't know, we've never done this before. And so everybody, but we divided the organizations and we said, let's just call them and, and say we're coming. And, and we did. And surprise, surprise, that, you know, some people took a long time to get back. Yeah. Some people said, yes, please come. And that's how it all started. Yeah. And so all of us are thinking that very, that race is of like, you know, Matthew 28, 19, yeah. I believe that's the number. It was in the back of our mind. And so one of the pamphlets that we were, somebody was responsible for organizing, uh, it was basically about Christianity, the, the Coptic church. Yeah. And so I was looking through the pamphlet, like, what are we going to hand out? So I was looking and I get to the last page. It was literally a small pamphlet. And it, that verse came up again. So it was the second time seeing the verse, Matthew 28, 19. Okay, and so we're like, we're like guys, it's Matthew 2019. So you're like, oh, okay, cool. So St. George, because there was four people in the group called St. George, so they're like, what should we call the service? I'm like, well, we can't call it anything except St. George. George. We're going to the island, it's called St. George. 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 Or there's four of us in the group that's yeah. called, it. it's St. It's George something. It's St. George service or yeah. something like that. So we're like, okay, like, let's go with St. George. That's how we chose the name. Right. And so the day that we're about to fly, George, the other George, okay, there's four of us, the other George, yeah. uh, he, would, he goes into the church in the evening, so we're about to fly, the, like, we're flying, we're going, we're going to be leaving the next day. It was in November 18th or something like that, and I see if George sent the group a picture of Saint, the, the church, the small church, Saint Athanasius mm -hmm. Church, with pictures of St. George icons everywhere. And it happened that the night that we were leaving, so the day we will arrive, it's going to be St. George, Saint George uh, uh, like a celebration. And it was it was a commemoration of the first church in Cappadocia. We just celebrated right. it like a few weeks ago for St. George. And so nobody of us, none of us knew that. It wasn't like we chose the date knowing that. Yeah. So that was another sign that we knew that God is you know, telling us, okay, mm. St. George is a service, we're going to the island. Yeah. And that he's going to be with us. And so that you talked about Air Canada. So we had all of these things that we want to take. And we, at this point, we reached out to the airline. We messaged them. And we're saying, we want, we have all of this stuff. We're a volunteer group, but we need your help. And so people said no, uh, like yeah. some of the directors. So Sarah reached out, kept going higher and higher and higher. The morning of mm -hmm. the plane, like we're leaving at 11 or something o'clock. We get, she sends a meal saying, they approved 21 bags or 26, or whatever the number of crazy yes. number of bags. Yes. And so they're like, okay, everybody go buy stuff, just <laughs> throw it into the bags. And that's what we did. We all went, oh, bought the bags, filled them with stuff, literally the, the day that we were leaving. And so that was another hand. Yeah. When we get to Grenada, mm. we have all of this stuff. <clears throat> you got to deal with customs. And so we're like, well, we're going to tell customs. And we're not going to lie. Mm. Like, what should we tell customs, right? And so there was a lady that, yeah, uh, that she remembered. Us. Yeah, she remembered you guys. Okay, okay, okay. So she, 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 she was there, and she remembered Sarah from mm, the from previous that, yeah. yeah. And so, but one of the things that came out of that is we, we told her, look, she asked us, is there anything in this bags that you're going to be distributing? Or anything? And we're like, yeah, we're going to orphanages. So, well, you know, you got to pay customs for that, right? And they we're like, but you know, whatever. Like we just talked to her. And she's like, okay, this time, but please follow the process. And the process is you have to get like a letter from one of the organizations, whatever. So she let us go through with 20 bags oh, of yeah. all stuff. Like, you know, I don't know what the value is, but it's probably a lot. And so that was the second thing that we saw with the hand of God coming in there yeah. as well. Yeah. Where now we get to this home. Okay? This home yeah. So we did, we went and visited all these things. And so we're now this, this home this is the picture Richmond there. Home. It's a Richmond yeah, home. the Richmond yeah. home. And so it's a home of elderly people that are disabled. And uh, we were just walking around, and it's basically think of a hospital bed. In that it's it's a room like this, and beds this bed lined up like beside each other, yeah. right? And so I'm here talking and with uh, with this gentleman. He was the one that's lying down paralyzed. Did you guys meet him? Yeah. Uh, his Donbar. His name is Donbar. I don't know if you. And he had it like it's yeah. a great smile. You you won't yeah. miss it. And so we were. I was talking with him, and all of a sudden I see a, an old man in the mm. corner. Come here, and very loud. Come here, yeah. come here. I'm like, okay, I'm gonna go, right? <laughs> and I was scared because I'm like, I, again, we've never done yeah. this before. What's he gonna? He's gonna yell at us, but we're like, what is he gonna tell yeah. us, right? And he sat there talking and talking and talking. And I, I go to him. I'm trying to change the subject, and I'm like, you know, like, okay, cool. Mm. 
okay? Uh, he's saying so many things I'm not following, yeah. okay? But I saw it, I changed the subject. said, do you have a favorite verse in the Bible? He goes, I do. Mm-hmm. My Bible is here, bring it. And I'm like, I'm like, cool, no problem. So I got, like, I, so I, I, I remove a bunch of stuff and I pull out this big Bible and I give it to him. And he goes, no, no, flip to the last page. I'm like, the last page of the Bible? I thought that somewhere it's going to be in one of like, the chapters. So I op- open, and, I, and then I go to him, here it is. And he goes, uh, he starts to read it. Matthew 28, 19. <laughs> go into all the world, baptize it in the Bible. Did you guys see it? No, I didn't. Uh, did you see it? Okay. Uh, I thought, yeah. uh, yes, 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 yeah, yes, yes, yeah, yes. Yeah. Okay. So he has it, and I'm like, I'm like, I'm like no, no, this, you're this, this is crazy. Out. You're freaking out. Like, I called everybody. I'm the guy. Like, please, please, can you tell them your favorite person in the Bible, Matthew 28. <laughs> I'm like, are you kidding me? And so we yeah. knew at that point, like, was, that God, God, God wants absolute. us there, and from whatever, uh, God, whatever happens, the service God does it. Repeated it. So whatever, whatever happens, and whatever the service is, God's yeah. got it. Like, oh, whatever He wants, He's gonna make it work. One hundred percent. We, we felt it throughout the whole week. Oh man, so that, that that was Richmond, and we all met the we all met him, and he spoke to us all at the end. Yeah. He just kept going, and he's like, he's, the one preaching. Yeah. he's preaching to us. And he was so full of he was so full of life, and he was so full of joy, and he's fully like his legs can't move, and he's just there, and he's full of smiles, Bible in his hand, and incredible. So these are the servants' comments. Um, we're just gonna go through them real quick. <coughs> Before I go into that. Another hand of God in the mission uh, was the fellowship that we all connected with. Um, I mean, we all enjoyed the microbus rides. It was really, like last time we were 23 people, so we had three different vehicles and two places. This time we, we were allowed to connect more because it was 10 servants plus Abuna. We connected through the bus rides. Everywhere we go, we're always singing or just, there was, there was a special spirit of joy that we all experienced in that microbus. I don't know if it was Abuna's presence or Emery's presence. I have no idea. God's presence. God's presence. Yeah, God's presence. It was truly joyful. It was really, really special. Um, the bus rides really connected us. And the fellowship at home, the fellowship with the servants really connected. And it was very, very, it was a unique group. And I'm saying this, I urge you and I encourage you guys for the next whatever mission trip, whether it's Grenada or anywhere, don't look to all these services that you do. Look at that fellowship. Uh, look at that connection with God that you get to experience. We all experience it on a nightly basis, on a daily basis, on a microbus basis, whatever it was. Uh, don't undertake that. It was such a special time for all of us. For all of us. It was really special. We're going to read the comments. So I just made it as initials. I'm not actually going to say who the names are. So this is SZ saying this. Home visits and hospital was very touching. In the struggles, we're thanking God. Queen Elizabeth's home, the QH. It was the ice breaking of the day. They loved and missed playing with the kids. They were the icing on the cake. The prison changed my perspective and corrected the bad image I had. Dorothy Hopkins was heartbreaking for me. Honestly, a little heavy, although I tried to not show it, but inside me was. My favorite people got to know and learn from in all aspects. Kindness, caring, loving, wisdom, funny, stronger relationship with God, working with full potential. All of you, plus Marathi. Favorite song, all of us. We had three songs going throughout the whole, all plays. John 3.16, um, King of Kings, and extra favorite, When the Spirit of the Lord Moves in My Heart. So that was SZ's which coming, we which we might experience today. We might have to experience. <laughs> From AB, Dorothy Hopkins, I was contemplating about God's grace. The prison, very touching. You were feeling guilty or wronged every day, and the inmates need a relief or just in any kind of way. And really it was that simplicity we met in the prison. They were just regular human beings that just wanted to interact. They wanted to talk. They wanted to just have a familiar presence. From MM, QEH, those kids just running at us and hugging us. They were missing that human touch and affection was just so heartwarming to feel. As you see all these visits, it had an effect on us rather than the other way around. And again, the hand of God in the mission. He wasn't only serving those need to be served, but he served us servants that we also needed to be served. Moving on, MS. The thing that touched me the most were Peter at Richmond. I couldn't understand how someone who is bedridden can be so full of faith. It was so cute when he showed me the card that Sarah wrote for him on the previous trip. In everything he said, and by the way, they all remember the original four. They remember Sarah, George, George, and Amgad, like by name. They, we were asked everywhere we went, Sister Allison, they asked for George's and Sarah and Amgad, so they all remember us. They remember the logo. 
In everything he said, you can tell that his eyes are set on heaven and the kingdom of God. Even though I'm sure he's in a lot of pain, he chooses to focus on things above. The prison, the prison visit was amazing too, witnessing how God can move people in a way we all couldn't have expected. And that's going to be the next slide. Dorothy Hopkins was a blessing for me. I had Matthew 25, 35 to 40 on my mind then. The kids at QEH singing, I'm so blessed. That's going to be in the summary video. It was the cutest thing ever. Sending us back to Canada with so much love. Finally spending time and getting to know all the servants and seeing God's love in everything we all did has taught me a lot about how to serve. The hand of God in the mission. The hand of God in the mission had such an effect on us. From KP, my reflection and most impactful places were QH and the prison. I just did not expect the reaction at the prison and thought that everyone would be passive, but despite their situation, so many people just wanted prayers or a blessing, so it was inspiring. Queen Elizabeth was also impactful, as all the kids were so filled with happiness, and really that's the best definition. They were completely, 100%, pure joy. And love and playfulness, and came to us with open arms, and running, and it made me reflect on my need for unquestioning acceptance, to accept God's will for me, or to accept Him in my life, even when I see Him as distant, or He seems like a stranger, just like how the kids accepted us, even though we were strangers to them. The hand of God in the mission. My favorite, the prison. This is an experience that left us speechless. I don't know if I'm going to told you, but the prison was not in the plan. It was not in the schedule. We were coming to Grenada with the prison not on our minds. We did not prepare for the prison. One thing led to another. Calls were here and there. All of a sudden, we hear Abuna's call is talking to a Sergeant Williams, and apparently, we're going to see the prison next day. So I remember that night, we're like Abuna's just talking to us, and we we have no idea. Like we came to Grenada, not with our minds that we're going to the prison. Everything else that we're doing, not the prison. So we go, and that night, so we're talking to Abuna, we're like, so Abuna's just telling us, he's briefing us, he's like, you know, they're going to call, they're going to just do on the PA system that, you know, there's a group from the Coptic Church in Canada that they're going to be visiting, and if you guys want to join in, by all means, and we only had an hour slot, so we know we're going to be in and out, and cool. So Abuna's talking to us at nighttime, and he's telling us, you know, we're expecting seven to eight people, you know, we might just do a little Bible study. We could do a play, so we like the idea of maybe presenting one of our plays, and we ended up choosing the Zacchaeus play. Again, all this was just kind of last minute. This was not in the plan. I need to reiterate that. It was not in the plan. So we go, and they welcome us, and it was very welcoming, very, very heartwarming, and a surreal experience. So he tells us to put all of our phones in the, in the, in the microbus, so we leave it in the microbus, and we have these name tags and look, these uh, visitors passes and we start walking in. He's touring us. He's telling us this is a maximum security prison. This is where the women and this is where he cracks a joke about women are just much better behaved. And he's just trying to lighten. But he's a very awesome gentleman. And we walk in. And I remember we're walking up the stairs. Abuna was first in line and I'm walking behind him. I'm like, Lord, have mercy. Like we're walking into a prison in a different country, different island. Like it's just, it's, an, it's just something that you just have to be conscious of the fact that you're, you're in a prison. And we go in. And we go into the big hall, there wasn't just seven or eight people. <coughs> the room was packed. It was about 50-ish people. By the time we actually started, it was about 75 to 80 people. And Are you guys are just in the midst of like this. We're, so it's literally, we're in the front. So we're in the front, and then we have tables. You guys not scared? Like, it was, I'll tell you, it was the hand of God in the mission. <laughs> like, that's all I can yeah. say. But we're all in the front, and we're just seeing that there's at least, what, like 10, 12 big tables and they're all just lined up they're all sitting and more people are coming in we all expected seven to eight people this was about 75 to 80 people and we're all in the front we're like okay so let's get this play ready you know we're all just we're all getting ready <laughs> let's get the play ready so we do this like chaos play it was hilarious it, at least i thought we thought so i don't know and we go we, we start doing the songs for them we do john 3 16 the song then we do king of kings and they're all in rhythm with us. And then we do Spirit of the Lord. And then we all witness the Holy Spirit. Abuna grabs the megaphone. And we asked, and we talked to Abuna after. Like, Abuna, did you prepare for any of this? He's like, no. Like, this was all stuff just 
on the somewhere on the spot some things like I knew from back then, but the whole lesson, like the whole sermon, whatever you want to call it, it was not prepared. And Abuna is going all full out Saint Peter, you know, he's, he's going like this. <laughs> and Abuna, it was a pleasure to witness. Like he was going back and forth, and he's like, you know, like he's going like this, you know, turn your life around. We loved it. Like, <laughs> So yeah, yeah, I was. We're not allowed. Just the atmosphere, the tension. It was, you know, it was. Actually, the night before, I, I, like, I, I know that the hand of God works. Yeah. But but my anxiety let me that tells me I have to plan, mm. I have to yeah. prepare. So I'm in between these yeah. two struggles. So I like to ask a lot. So I sat with Mirati and said, yeah. "What do you do?" I said, "I do Bible study." Bible study, family, Bible study, mm. okay, so I'm trying to explain to say, how can I do Bible study in a, yeah. in a prison? That's why I imagine six or seven, yeah. 75. Uh, <laughs> Not really what that is. <laughs> and actually, she, she suggested, okay, uh, what do you do? What do you talk about Bible study? I talk about sacraments. Yeah. So when I was there, talk about Zacchaeus. So uh, the appropriate sacraments is repentance repent. and confession. Yeah. So I talked to them about the sacrament of repentance yeah. and, uh, uh, and yeah. confession. Yeah. Those, those. Did anybody approach you? No, so hold on. This is the best oh, part. This yes, is the yes, best. Sorry, sorry. This is <laughs> the <laughs> best. Okay, okay. This wow. is the best part of the whole trip, in my in my opinion. So after Abuna is all done, and it was a great, great, like great something to witness. Was, was like you could hear a pin drop? Like quiet? It was full quiet. Like we're fully, we're all sitting in the bench behind the screens it. Screams in the courtyard. No, in the courtyard, but in the actual <laughs> hall, like everyone's full out sitting and just paying attention. It was really as if you're witnessing, like, Rabbina can be kalim. Like, it was awesome. Even, like, it was just, I think we're all personally touched until now. It's just that experience left us speechless. So, this is what happened. So, he's done. Some guy way in the back. And then, can you put your head on me and pray? So, Abuna looks at the sergeant. He's like, like, is that allowed? So, he's like, yeah, come on in. So, the guy comes all the way in the back. You know, so Abuna's shuffling, he's all ready, he's got his oil ready and the cross. <laughs> you know? And the guy comes, and Abuna's full out, like, mm, mm, and he prays on him. And all of a sudden, we see a full lineup. Wow. Full lineup. Full lineup. And Abuna's one by one by one by one to the point that the sergeant's like, yo, can we do groups? <laughs> you know? So. So a group start coming up, and Abuna, with the whole, like, he's gathering like five people at a time, he's praying, and then... <laughs> respectfully, respectfully. But he's just going through every, each person, until whoever wanted to get, you know, prayed on, got prayed on. And it was just an <coughs> incredible experience, because this was not in the plan. In the plan. <laughs> God's hand in the mission. It was, and some of them were kind of doing kind of confession. Yeah. So they were admitting, like, like I'm, I'm, I'm on drugs, pray for me, I'm on this, pray for me, pray for my family, pray for this, pray for that. So they were kind of confession plus prayer request. So they were coming and asking specifically for certain, for certain prayer, which was amazing. Yeah. Wow. It was amazing to witness. It was amazing to witness. And we really felt like God has to, like, he wants to go to every single person. It doesn't matter if you're in prison, if you're locked up, if you're an addict, if you're this or if you're that, that doesn't matter to God. He sent, like he sent his only begotten son. That's really the, the verse. And for us to be in that prison and witness those moments, speechless. It was just really the hand of God in the mission. And that prison experience kind of taught us that we can only do so much. And yes, it's our part to do as much as we can. But his hand is present. And he's the one that's moving everything. Moving on, so we kind of he kind of toured us. When, uh, when we were when we were going in to the prison, like like, like my, my my feeling and my experience is you remember how when Peter was in the prison, mm -hmm. when an angel appeared to him to take him outside the prison, yeah. I felt the other way is happening. <laughs> <laughs> I felt that God is sending his angel to the surgeon and leading us yeah. inside because this is something mm -hmm. that we want, like not planned, but we wanted to yeah. do. So felt like kind of doors are being, yeah, being opened, opened and we are going inside to do to do the service. Really and uh, we were not planning to have the ladies, uh, mm. uh, uh, the, 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 the inmates. Yeah, uh, yeah the inmates, that's inmates. right. That's right. So to the to our surprise, he knocked on one of the doors. Said, "This is this is for the uh, female inmate." And he asked them, "We are having uh, this is a group coming. 
uh, announce it. Whoever wants to come, let them come. Mm. So it was beyond, like we said, we can just go, go to the male inmate mm. and that's it. But God opened the door so that the female also came and attended yeah. this. So 50% of them came. <laughs> <laughs> Four. Four of them. Yeah, why not? No, it was incredible. It was incredible. The prison was just, um, this was outside. We asked him if we could take a picture. And he's just, you know, he's a very well-spoken gentleman. We talked politics, religion, whatever he wants. Like, anyways. Um, but yeah, he's uh, full out. And by the way, I had a different shirt. Because again, sweat and buckets everywhere I go. I had an extra shirt. Oh, my good times. So the quick summary. They made us wear pants too. Sorry? I don't know. We could have just shorts. So. All right, just a quick summary. So there were three liturgies were prayed Wednesday, Friday, and Sunday. Some students at the SGU joined us. So again, it was really a blessing for the students to receive an abuna and to have communion. Um, they saw them actually came to our house on the Friday, I believe, and then we did a liturgy in Sunday at the school. And by the way, as for the students, uh, like they were like, "Is this the regular liturgy?" It's like this is the first liturgy for us for anyone. So for them, for them, liturgy is not a common thing. Communion is something rare. You know, it's for them to have communion. This was a blessing for them. We started the days, the other days with morning doxology, like prayer prayers, and I felt like that really united us. And the, it was just breathtaking times and breathtaking views, and just to start the day with morning doxology, it was just um, the hand of God in the mission. Certain nights we had Bible reading reflections. Uh, we didn't get through all the what we wanted, but overall, again, we had reflections, we had fellowship nights. Enjoyed the fellowship of one another truly around the dinner table on a nightly basis. It was really a special thing, um, and I feel like the fellowship between all 11 of us was really special. It was really, really special. It was unique, and it was just uh, forever bonding. So we come back from all a hectic day, yeah. and Andrew would go to the kitchen. <laughs> he was I'm just the cook. I'm just the cook. I'm just the cook. And in like 15 he was minutes, minutes, he was our cook when we went. Yeah. Yes, he's a great cook. No, like, Abuna, I'm gonna take care of the kitchen. Yeah. So the kitchen and I'll I don't stop. Because I've said him, I'm gonna do this. So we come back from a hectic day. And in like 15, 20 minutes, yeah. we have the dinner, uh, the dinner ready. We gotta, dinner we're, we're hungry, Abuna. Abuna we're hungry. <laughs> <laughs> it was amazing. It was an amazing experience. It's a pleasure to cook. Uh, last but not least, every night, so we prepare what items we need to take for the next day. So as you see, the day, there's a lot of things. So we start off by 8 or 7.30, and it just kind of end whenever it ends, really. Um, I want to say one more thing, though. But I probably forgot. But anyways. We're going to do a summary video right now, um, if I can play it out. Alfred was in the kitchen as well. Yeah, Alfred, Alfred and, uh, Alfred and uh, so Ahmed. So we have Alfred, Alfred and Ahmed. <laughs> <laughs> the tastiest food yeah. we've ever had, to be honest. <laughs> made with love. Made with and love. Yeah, made with love. Yeah, yeah, made with love. Yeah, so yeah, did you guys take the food here with, from you? Like so yeah, food? same thing as last time, man. Costco the day of and giddy up. I even got cucumbers and garlic and everything from here, from Superstore. <laughs> I'm like, we need something, bro. <laughs> But all to say, I remember what, um, so I want to say one last thing. So, I mean, our schedules worked around the homes and the sites. So there was leisure time. There was gaps. So Abuna was fortunate enough to kind of give us that free time. And that free time, we also bonded. And there were certain sites that we visited. It was just, again, good bonding time. And just, um, we really just felt joyful from a.m. to p.m. throughout all week. And it was just something special. I'm only saying that because you're about to see the video with just um, good times and good laughs. Um, it's just uh, that was our leisure time, but I mean, it was yeah, really... you couldn't you couldn't take pictures, right? Because yeah, you like you have to not really take pictures of inmates. Oh, inmates picture. prison, yeah. Like, we don't like these are sensitive areas. So, but these what you'll see is like the leisure time. The leisure time, yeah. And yeah. even the kids, like any yeah. of the places that we would go to, yeah. they would tell us no photos for no the photos. kids. The maximum from the back, so that their backs that they can show, but no photos for the kids. That's why the only pictures we're able to take. Is when we were having some, so it was not all fun. <laughs> yeah, exactly. but the picture showed only all the most of the fun. <laughs> I'm gonna try to play the video with no issues or technical Do you difficulties. Connect with this as well. Is it good to do it? Ah, doctor. What's it called? Uh, Bosey. Mm. Uh, let's see.
is our first time doing this song, and we totally botched it. It's so rusty. We only perfected it the last day. And then, wait. <laughs> we were still working it out, man. Uh, so this is the hospital, outside the hospital. This is Richmond. That's Simhart from Saskatchewan. Oh, His name was Ben. That's the guy. Ben, His that's name is Ben. Yeah. progress to step up from last time because we weren't even allowed to take any kind of pictures let alone videos so for her to say we could take a video again just shows the progress of the hand of God in the mission and this is a video that they wanted to send to the old group and to all of our groups really Thank you. 
So that's Murati, second from the right. The one next to Alfred. Yeah, the one next to Alfred, yeah. So that's Murati. Yeah. Yeah, we'll
unless you go. So hopefully this has been a, a, an opportunity for you to see what really happened and kind of a motivation for next year to, uh, to join if, if there is a spot because I have a commitment from the same group to go. So we're not taking more than, 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 than one. Okay? So two more spots. Two more spots. Two more spots. <laughs> Thank you, thank you very much, uh, Andrew and GMG 2020. <laughs> uh, I'm sure maybe afterwards, if you want to talk with uh, with any of the participants, uh, Andrew, Bishoy, Karen, Nora, Alfred, they would they would be happy to answer any of your uh, questions and share anything that you really want 